Well, hello there. It's not additional seriously speaking, and today I'm talking about body issues. And seriously, everybody has one thing about their body that they don't like. I am so sure of that. Don't you want to know what I don't like about my body? Well, on the show today, I have two people who have learned to live in the bodies that God has given to them, and they are so confident about it. And I'm talking about plus size. You know how it is? Are they horrible or are they fat? Or what is it? What is it like to look like what people would call a robo? And is this a serious matter? Surely it is, because body issues forever remain a topic of conversation, no matter what culture you're in, even in Africa. So I'll be back with my guest on Seriously Speaking in a short while, if you don't go away. Now, welcome back. My first guest on the show today, I first met her as a chef. And then I found out that she's a supermodel. And then I found out she's a mother of three. And then I found among the three, she has a challenged daughter. But in all of this, the constant factor is a bubbly, friendly character that is a plus size mama. It's my pleasure to welcome <laughs> Faye Luther. You're laughing. I am. <laughs> are all those things true? They are. They you are, are all of those things. I am. But the constant denominating factor is your fee. Yes, I and am. And fee is in this amazing like body. body yes it is it is you know tell me about the journey here because i mean first of all can we start by you defining for me what's the difference between a robot fat obesity and plus size i really honestly don't think that there is a difference i just think that it's the way that people phrase it i think that these things are just um people's perceptions um an horrible an horrible girl is a fat girl a plus girl is a big girl. Uh, an Amazon is a woman of size and stature. So I just think it depends on the person. And all those um, labels that we put are just based on the person who's saying them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so... Depends on where the person is coming from. Where the person is coming from, exactly. But from you growing up, you grew up in a family that there was a lot of support, love, guidance. Did you have body issues as a child? And if you did mm. or didn't, what made it so? Um, I don't think I had, oh, well, not that I had body issues as a child, but I grew up as a family. I have the three girls. Um, I'm the first daughter, and I'm the biggest one. Um, and from when I was very little. How yes. tall are you? You're like six, two, six, No, two? I'm not, actually. I'm five, nine. And the doctor yeah. just said I've grown a little bit, so I'm just 5'9 and some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I've been 5'9 all my life, but apparently I've grown... you wear heels? I do wear heels. That's why I thought you were 6'3". No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm the shortest of my family. Um, and um, when I was little, they used to call me Okbalo Granny, which was grandma's frog. <laughs> 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 because I was always round and chubby. I was that little girl that would just be running around the place. I would never have any shoes on, and I was always eating or... I was always laughing or something, so they used to call, and I had big eyes, very big eyes, so they used to call me Okbolo Granny, which means fat frog, basically, you know, but um, I don't think I had body issues growing up. But it was a, it was a, it was a jocular manner. It was, it was not condemned. No. You. I think in Nigeria, everything that we say, even when we say Orobo, everything is always in a, in a joke, ah, ah, auntie, ah, you are eating too much now, ah, ah, what are you doing again, auntie, should you eat that, you know? So everybody says it's in a joke, but you do have the people who, you know, they'd be mean about it. But I always got it in a joke form. Mm -hmm. So, so it, didn't, it didn't affect how you thought about yourself? No. When didn't. did you realize that this can be an issue? Why well, am I asking these yeah. questions? I recently, you had, that's where the whole idea of yes, doing this show yes, came about. Yes, yes. You had Curves in the City. I did. I which did, means did. cosmopolitan girls yes. who are big yes. do have an issue. They do. Mm -hmm. I think part of it is that we don't, um, our culture especially, we don't talk about these things. So even when people talk about being plus size or being big, it's always said sort of like in a very behind the scenes way. So even when they call you a robot, you're not really, we don't ever confront these issues or we don't talk about them. So we don't know how the person is feeling about these issues. A lot of plus size people that you see, a lot of big girls, they're always the ones who are smiling, laughing. So you don't really know the heart of the person or how it has affected them in their life, you know. Um, there's been a lot of, I'm not, I've not always been this friendly and jocular, but when I saw that it was the easiest way to be, to always be smiling and, you know, the fat girl is always the one in the movies who is the laughing one, who is always, she's either the clown 
<laughs> she's either the one who is the um, nice the, mama. the nice mom yes you know everywhere all the modeling competitions I've been in or environments I mean I'm always mama Faye I'm never just Faye they always have to add mama in it and I'm wondering whether is it because of my size or what it is but we're always placed in that sort of motherly role and I think it's because of our size okay so you as a child you grew up without any issues yes. but it became an issue at what point? I think my size became an issue when I got married. My husband is very tall, and he doesn't mean to make it an issue, but he's very tall, he's very slim, he's very athletic. He's a vegetarian, one of the few <laughs> Nigerian he, Igbo. He was a vegan. He was a vegan. He was a vegan, but he's one of the few Nigerian Igbo uh, vegetarians that I had ever met before. And so he's very into um, healthy eating, and he was athletic and everything. And I came, you know, I'm just there. Oh, I love food. You know, I'm a trained chef and uh, food is my thing. So um, it makes me very sad when I'm not, I haven't eaten something good. <laughs> and here comes this man who is very um, particular about, you know, his food, his diet, his exercise. And I think it started, you know, playing a little bit on my insecurities. And then also I had a lot of health issues during um, trying to have babies and things. So that also... So you started to wonder if it's not your size. Whether it was So you went size. through a depressive state and all of that. But I I'll did. take a break because yeah. I want to introduce another young lady yes. who is also plus size. Yes. And in fact, what she shared at the Curves in the City yes. kind of like had me almost in tears. Mm. So if I'll take a break and I'll return with the second guest I have on the show today who is another plus size model. So welcome back on Seriously Speaking. We're talking plus size, and so I'm going to have my next plus size guest model for you. She's got a fantastic figure eight. When you talk hourglass, you're thinking about Sandra. Okay, left, right, strike a pose, turn around. Okay, take a seat. <laughs> Let's applaud her. Come on. But honestly, Sandra, sometime, maybe when you were like 15, 16, would you have been able to do that? No. Why? Because I was not always comfortable in my size and I would always think that people are saying something about me. What are they saying? What are they saying? Because they used to call me Sandy Fat in secondary school. So that was my name. They called me. Do you remember who gave you that name? Was it the bully in the class or was it the brightest girl in the class or it just happened? Uh, it just happened. We used to have a clique, so I was the bigger one among them. There's no way they would see me, they would not know it's Sandra. If my back was <laughs> Sandra, so they just called me Sandy Fat because we had like two other Sandras, mm -hmm. so they just Sandy Fat. You were the only fat one? Yeah. So, I mean, to you, what does fat mean? Um, fat, it means, um, um like, not the normal size that is termed, mm -hmm. like from size 10 downwards. So I've, I think when I was even bigger, when I look at the pictures, I, I knew that I wasn't so big as I am now because they still saw me as fat. My friends were way skinnier, and maybe I was just maybe 10 or 12, and they still called me fat. So I've always felt that I'm fat, and I, I, I just feel as, like the elephant in the room, like I'm always very big, but it's just even now that I'm way bigger than where I used to be. So what you're saying is in the past, it's, it's, it's relative. Depends on who people are around you, yeah. how big or how small. But you, you know, you talked about your mother not even being fat, no. right? And then you were fat. Did you ever ask yourself, and you went through these depressive situations and all of that, is it imperative? Does it mean that everybody who's big will end up going through that kind of state? Mm. Sandra should answer that. Tell me about your mom. And... My mom was not big. She only gets big when she gives birth. And um, she's way slimmer than me. I think it's from my dad's family. They do have um, a little bit of flesh. Well, flesh. <laughs> my grandma, she's big. My dad was big. He's huge. And um, so I think I got that from that side of the family. Mm -hmm. So being fat. I don't know. It it's feels quite like a nice word. Uh, it's not so nice, but we've accepted it because that's, if you don't accept it, you won't be able to confront any other thing because you still feel like you're not acceptable, you're not worth it. You won't have that confidence. So I prefer to tell me plus size, plus size or big, but not fat. Okay, but you run now. How did your blog start? Because it was a blog about plus, what do you call it? 
plus size fashion ninja. Why did that start for you? Was it a statement of the fact that being plus size is not? No, it started um, when I first opened my Instagram account, like in 2015. I just, you know, I used to watch a lot of YouTube videos. I used to follow like Chanel Ambrose and the like. So I saw the way they were living and they were so confident and proud of themselves. They wear crop tops and all that. And in Nigeria, yeah, we, we are not able to dress, you know, like that. We don't we even find those plus size. plus size. Yes, we, we, we don't even find such clothing that are able to fit our body type. Is it that they are too small? or they don't fit, they are very big, like... Exactly, no <laughs> Yes, <laughs> boo-boos and all that. So I decided to create the blog to, you know, inspire other women like me because on average, every Nigerian, most Nigerian women are plus size from size 12 upwards, so they are plus size. And if we can be able to switch up our styles enough, our style helps boost our confidence, yes. It helps to boost our confidence. If you dress well and you go out, you know, you can raise you your can head step up. up. You can uh, say that yeah. again, absolutely. But I must take a break. I take a break so that when I come back, I want to discuss what the community you're trying to create, how important it is for us to feel one in the plus size. It's a shade. It is. I'll be right back with my guests in a short while.